to ourselves with hands and arms. Right here, you can see I'm trying to get it centered on camera. And then we're going to talk about feathering and using the colored pencils. So let me turn that and center it on camera for everybody. Okay, and I have um, just a couple of brushes for this. I have a liner brush and I have a round brush. That's a number one round and my liner brush and of course my filbert. And my paint palette is set up um, with burnt sienna, my skin tone, and um, an off-white color. Sometimes um, I use the Titan Buff. Sometimes you can use like bleached titanium. You can just use an off-white or a white. And my fancy, super duper fancy paint palette today is my paper plate. Try to get this. I keep pushing it the wrong way to get it to be centered. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go ahead and get started. We're going to jump right into it because i got a lot of ground to cover. And I just want to make sure you guys see the hands and the arms really well because we focus a lot on faces. But the hands and the arms can be really tricky, especially when they're crossed like this and when they're as realistic as I do it. So um, on the paper, I have them outlined in black, the features that I'm going to be painting, so that you can see them. Because this is the pencil, it's really hard to see on camera. But you don't have to outline your features in um, waterproof pen. If it's easier for you to do that, go ahead. So that's kind of taking away some of my underpainting, my first layer of burnt sienna. But I'm going to try to paint over this pen a little anyway. And your line quality matters when you're um, painting delicate things like hands and fingers. The thicker your brush stroke, the thicker your fingers are going to look. So it just depends on how delicate you want your brush stroke to look and how delicate you want your fingers to look. And I always think of things in three colors, no matter what it is, whether it's hair or skin tone or whatever. I think of it as the shadow, the midtone, and the highlight. And that was also in the Sweet Sirens lesson, where I kind of broke things down into threes in the Painting Mermaids lesson. And for this, our shadow is our burnt sienna. And there's a line there. I don't know if you guys can see it that well for the shadow. And then this is the midtone, and this is the highlight area. You're going to hear me sniffly. I am not sick. I just have really bad allergies. And I live in Florida, and we mowed the grass, and all of a sudden I am a sniffly mess. Down here, can you see this area here? This is going to be the shadow down here. This is all a watery burnt sienna. I am working on a piece of watercolor paper for this one, so you're going to see the watercolor paper kind of absorb this paint. If I were working on a, um, a piece of canvas, the paint would absorb this quickly. If you don't want your paint to absorb into your paper as quickly, you can gesso it. The acrylic binder and gesso will help stop the um, paper from absorbing your paint. I'm going to grab up here. And these fingers are away from the body, so they're going to be in shadow as well. And again, I'll get you guys this little map I made. as well. And you can see down here where I started the brush stroke up here so it's more opaque and then it goes to a more light and watery stroke. I need that a little darker down here but just be careful of your brush strokes and how much water you're using. The watercolor paper with this much water in the acrylic is going to make my acrylic look like watercolor. And I get up here into these fingers too. Where the fingers are are going to be a little bit darker than the shovel area of the hand. If you can see I drew little circles in the middle because where the bones are on the hand is where I'm going to highlight the hand.
I'm just trying to go slower than I usually do too because you guys know me I paint so fast and I was trying to explain it it's it's like um, giving so many directions to your own house right this is um, a painting that I've done a couple of times now for the class so I already know how to do everything really fast you already know how to get to your house so when you're describing the directions to get to your house to somebody who's never been there and you're like oh yeah you just drive a couple you know miles up the street and take a left hand turn and that person who's driving is like feeling every foot of that drive looking around for the right road to turn on and I think it's the same thing when you guys are painting you just you don't know when that turns coming up yet you don't know when you're gonna be done what step and I'm going to do her shoulders and into her face too while this dries so we're not waiting so much. So this is going to be the area of mid-tone and up here is going to be the area of highlight. We're going to do the same thing in the face as well. And it's flipped. I couldn't unflip it. I think I'm going to have to mess with it some more for evening class to see if I can't get this um, flipped to the correct side. This is a mirrored. picture but we're gonna go with it again I outline this in pen so that you guys could see it but I'm gonna keep going with my burnt sienna as if it weren't so you outline the features and then paint in the shadows with the burnt sienna and this is still um, a pretty watery mix her ears are in shadow so I'm gonna paint those in completely and if you guys do have questions or you need to see something demoed, please let me know in chat. I'm not quite looking at chat yet, but I will look up every once in a while just to see what you guys um, are saying. I do not always outline my drawings with black marker, but I do love black marker money, so I do it a lot. This here is just so you guys can see everything. It tends to flatten out your picture and make it look a little bit more illustrative or cartoony. Or um, it's kind of been an accepted way of seeing art journal work as well. I'm noticing. I'm not really an art journaler myself. I kind of just got into it. But I see a lot of really heavy black lines. Do I have extender? I do not have extender at this level. If you're slow, and you don't want your paint to dry and you want to be able to blend it a lot, you see extender at this level. I would recommend it mostly at the skin tone level so that you can get a more smooth, even skin tone to use your extender. This is just water. This circle here is also for highlights, so I'm going to ignore it right now. This is really um, a great exercise to do too if you do have a art journal or a sketchbook. It's just practicing where the shadows and highlights go. You can do this with colored pencil even. You don't have to just do this with paint. And you can vary your shadows. I'm just watering down the um, burnt sienna more or less depending on how dark I'd like that shadow to be. There's too much water in there, so I'm just pulling it out. You guys might hear my son too. My four-year-old is in the living room, but he saw that I was going to be on TV today and may try to run in here. So just a heads up if you hear me talking. Pull this up just a little, and this um, this three-part way of doing um, skin tones, where you do a shadow, a uh, mid-tone, and a highlight, works with any skin tone. And burnt sienna actually works with any skin tone as well um, as an underpainting. It's a classic paint color for underpainting from fine art. Um, because it's a really nice, warm, rich brown, and you can use it with anything. 
is. I'm going to outline the rest of this and we're going to move back down to the hands and arms so you guys can see what's going on down there. You see the lines here are thicker, so that's going to look even more shadowed. And I'm going to move downwards. Back in my hands. So this is all dry. It's not wet at all. So I'm going to go ahead and um, over top of it. You can use the color palette from the eight steps with watercolors. The only thing, um, Monique, is that with watercolors, they are water soluble. So each layer you build up might pull up an underneath layer. And I've got my filbert. You guys can see it's a brand new guy. So number 12 is a kind of a longer filbert, but I love these for painting. Um, anything that has to do with skin tones because they make it so soft. This curved tip of the filbert brush makes um, all your blending softer. Whereas if you were using a flat or a bright brush, you would get the line, the delineation of where your blending happens to be. And I'm using um, Apple Barrel Light Mocha as my base instead of mixing um, one with my burnt sienna because it takes a step out. It's very convenient. But use whatever skin tone you'd like. And I'm going to paint over everything with my light mocha. And the only trouble you would have with um, mapping out your highlights and shadows like this is depending on how translucent your paint happens to be, you will see your pencil marks through it. So just be careful if you do mark anything in pencil. This is a giant brush for these fingers too. I'm trying to make it work by using the side of it. Another um, really fun thing to practice with would be to, instead of drawing your underpainting and then painting it, just do a complete brush stroke painted underpainting. Your painting will look radically different with using um, painted lines instead of drawn or pen lines. And for the opposite, if you are not comfortable using um, paint all the time, you can get a sepia tone marker that's waterproof and you could do your underpainting drawing just in that. Or you could do it in a, um, like a, I believe Prismacolor has a burnt sienna or burnt ochre color pencil. You could do it all in colored pencil as well. And then just paint um, the skin tone glaze on top to kind of make it look more painterly. I usually, when I'm painting too, I don't, I don't focus on, I'm drawing hands now. I'm painting hands now. It's, I'm painting the figure. So I don't try to see each part as separate. I used to do that, and then I would, I would, I would make myself nervous because I always thought, well, I can't paint hands. I'm not good at hands. Because I was seeing them as something that I had to learn how to do separately instead of just seeing them as learning how to paint the entire body. It's all the same. It's still that same three-step process. I'm using a smaller brush to get these little overpainted areas to blend a little better. And into the fingers here, too. Smaller brush is working a lot better. And then over on this side here, I have to fill that in, too. So I'm just going to go ahead and do it with the smaller brush I have in my hand right now. If you want to leave shadow showing as well, it's very easy. You can do that. When you're painting, you can just reserve that area. You see that? So when you're painting, you can reserve an area of dark shadow just by not painting it. And you can get even more depth to your shading 
without having to custom mix any colors. And this will make sense visually too because the burnt sienna that you're using is a color that's already in the painting everywhere. Okay, and this is super duper wet. We might need two um, layers because this is on paper. So just remember, even though the, the steps are three steps, you might need uh, a couple of layers with each step. I'm going to try one more up here. It's kind of blotchy. I'm not sure if you can see it. Um, on screen as much how blotchy it is because you have the reflection of the sunlight. But in person I can see the blotchiness of the paint. So I'm going to give it another coat of the light mocha. Into the fingers. All the way up top. And I'm going to go on the side as well. Hey, Pat, could you mute you. your mic? Because you're going to be on screen. If you make any noise, it's going to pop to you anytime anybody talks. Um, if their mic's unmuted the way Google Hangouts works is it actually put you guys on screen which is cool if you're asking questions and stuff or if you want to show um, any work that you have and you're asking a question that's perfect and you guys can do that too um, if you'd like to bring any work that you've worked on um, it doesn't even have to be this lesson it could be a previous lesson and you actually want to show it to me on camera and get live feedback we can do that as well and if you'd rather not do that, say, during a lesson, we can also schedule a Google Hangout where we just do um, feedback and critiques. It depends on how comfortable you guys are with um, being on camera or doing that. Just let me know, though. And I'll just one more coat over here on this side. But you can see where this um, black marker is. I'm going to move the paper around just a little bit over here. You see where this this would usually be an underpainting of burnt sienna. But I had black marker so you guys could see what was going on. So it's actually sort of like an underpainting of black marker. You guys can do this too. You don't have to do the painting. If you're doing something in pen, you'll have it show through as well. Hey, Diane, could you please... Um, your mic because I can hear you and I can kind of hear myself or I can pop over and do it. Thank you guys for helping me. Hi Trina, I haven't seen uh, you around because you're not in the Facebook group but I just wanted to tell you we haven't forgotten. Is it off there? No, ma'am, it's up in the right hand corner. Check where the microphone and the camera are and they have a slash room and just click them. I think we got you now. Did everybody get into the um, the new classroom? Okay, I'm gonna move up to the face and start painting that. I know it was kind of a weird setup because you had to sign up for WordPress, but it's the only way I could have done it that you didn't have to have a password protected. Um, page every time you want to view something, enter a password, let me go this way. I hope this setup works better because the old one page setup was just too cluttered. It's really hard to get everything to even make sense. There was so much information on one page. And I'm going to get started on the face and shoulders now. And I really just want to show you guys um, the skin tones. I really wanted to make sure I was doing the hands and arms, but they have to dry in between, so we're doing the face today, too. We're only 20 minutes in, too, so I can probably get a lot done with you guys today. And then I'm going to talk about um, using the wet colored pencil on different surfaces. 
uh, with the acrylic glaze on top. A little bit into feathering as well. I talked about feathering um, for this project. And it's another paint technique like I was speaking about scumbling. Feathering is just another version of um, blending your paint softly. And I can actually show you it now. But it works a little better when um, you have color on top of color. Feathering is when you paint the color on with one brush. And then you just kind of wiggle a clean, damp brush up against the edge to blend. Simple, easy. It doesn't work as much on watercolor paper, just like the stumbling, you know, because you can't you can't scrub. You have to be gentle. But it does really work with the extender if you're trying to blend a highlight or a lighter color into a color that's already on the page. Paint all the way around. With the advanced faces lesson, we were working on um, how you shade, depending on your personal style, whether you want to do a more whimsical or sort of a more um, realistic style. And a lot of that actually has to do with how you paint the nose. And so in this one, we're going to do more of a whimsical nose versus a realistic nose with the shading. Have you guys practiced with that? Have you noticed that in your own work? Is anybody really thinking necessarily about their style right now? Gesso will definitely help when scumbling or feathering on the watercolor paper. And I, I suggest two to three coats of gesso. Gesso now is made with, um, it's an acrylic binder, so it's just like the stuff that binds pigment in acrylic paint and calcium carbonate and usually like a titanium white paint. So, um, I believe calcium carbonate is the same stuff that's in Tums too, which makes me giggle. And so the calcium carbonate is what gives it its, its tooth, you know, its texture, but then the paint actually absorbs into the gesso instead of into the paper. Okay, I'm just letting it dry and I'm trying to if you guys can see, can you see the unevenness that's going on in here? My fingers here, the camera should focus. There's a little bit of unevenness. And that's what I'm looking at when I paint my skin tone. I'd rather have two layers than one thick layer. Because the second coat should cover up that uneven skin tone pretty well. Just like adding foundation, I always say. But it's got to dry before you can actually see any spots like that. I'm going to pop on down here to her neck and shoulders. Paint this in really quickly. Whatever gets you to make art though, Roberta, even if you've just only been sketching versus painting, you're going to find your style in drawing. And drawing well helps you paint well because it's the same muscle memory in your hands to paint as it is to draw. Yeah, fine tune those muscles because if you if you don't use it, you do lose it. You might not um, necessarily forget your taste, you know what I mean? Or forget how the paint or pencil works, but your hand will actually become more clumsy. So keeping up sketching works a lot. And then if you do want to um, slowly work in painting practice, you can. You don't have to start with all the eight steps or go crazy with it. You guys can start putting just paint over colored pencil, whatever you need to do to make yourself comfortable. Talk to me about it in um, class through the comments on the blog, or you can talk to me about it in the Facebook group and let me know what's up, because I can't help you if I don't know what your questions are. I'm just finishing up over here, and I think our hands are going to be pretty darn dry by the time I'm done.
Yeah, her face, so you guys can see that now. You see how it started to dry a lot? You can start seeing all the unevenness in her face now, too. We're going to do another coat on her face, but not right now, because everything on the bottom is pretty dry. You guys see my little camera stand. I'm going to move that out of the way and try to get everything even. Sorry about the movement, if movement bothers you. It bothers me, especially when watching videos, so I'm trying to keep it to a minimum. The next step would be the highlights, because we did the shadow. We have our mid-tone, and we're going to have our highlights in there. And I'm going to mix um, my color. And for this lesson, I had a quick uh, color mixing guide again, just to show you the color mixes together. I'll show you the mess of my paper plate palette. I make a mess, and it doesn't bother me because I have a <laughs> disposable palette right now. To get the color I want, I just take my paint and I'm mixing it into my existing skin tone until eyeballing it. I have a color that kind of looks like it would be a highlight to me. I give you guys mixes, you know, like 50%, 25%, and it's it's a good basis, but kind of go with what looks right to you. If I tell you 50% of the off-white, 50% of the color, and you look at it you say, that looks too light, add some more skin tone. Go with what your gut says, not just with what I've written down in the PDF. And I'm going to paint according to this line that is up here. There was a little dot here for some of the bones in the wrist. And then it's kind of like an elongated exclamation point. If you like that look, the kind of um, self-shaded cartoony look, you can leave it. Or you can take the separate clean brush and you can feather your edges. And then it'll just blend everything together a little bit. So it, if you can see that it's like scumbling without all of the heartache <laughs> and mess of scumbling, if scumbling was just too much painting for you. And I'm getting more off the camera. I'm getting more highlight onto my brush, and we're going to do it again. The next area of highlight for me was um, in the shovel of the hand, right in the middle. Only to the wrist. So I'm going to stop at the wrist. And it makes it look, it's kind of, it's kind of just a shortcut to make it look more three-dimensional. So the wrist now looks more round, and it's stopping up here at the hand. You might not be able to see it as much while it's wet, but it just knowing where to place the paint will save you a lot of time painting. I'm going to get a little bit more highlight up there so you guys can see it, because it's not really that noticeable because it's wet. When paint is wet, it's actually darker. So I'm going to go right to where the wrist is, and then I'm paint that shovel in. And then the next um, part of the highlight is going to be on the thumbs. And just imagine the bones underneath the finger. It sounds creepy, but that's what you need to do. And just paint in the middle as if you're painting that bone for each of the fingers. And I'm painting them all the way down into that shovel I painted in there. And then just feather it out. If it looks too um, lined, so if you have a really, really heavy line there, just use a clean, damp brush and go over it. And this I'm, I'm very, very light. I'm just using the tip of the brush. I'm not pushing down. I'm just using the tip of the brush. It's almost like um, if you have a blush brush at home and you're blushing your face, you, you're not like scraping that on your face. You know, it's a very gentle motion. And I'm going to go over to the other side to this hand. Let me try to see if I can get a little closer so you guys can see that better. And it'll focus more when my hand's actually in the picture. But again, I just want to make the point that 
don't think of it as I'm bad at painting hands because it's really easy to get caught up on that. Just think of it as the three colors. The highlight you have and then the mid-tone and the shadow following the lines that are already there. And it shouldn't really worry you as much. You start psyching yourself out thinking, oh, I'm not so good at painting hands. So I'm going to paint just into the bones again. And then I'm going to um, feather it. You can see the highlight a little better now that the light is reflecting off of it. I'm just blending gently. And you can use a smaller brush than what I'm using, too. <laughs> I'm using this giant filbert on this tiny little hand. Let's see if I can't move this over so that we can see everything. This hand is already dry. And this hand's still wet, so you can see the, um, the light shining off of it better. And I'm just going to go over my lines that are kind of um, lost here with my liner brush and my burnt sienna. You could do your darkest darks at this point, your burnt ochre, or pardon me, your burnt umber. Because I used that black pen to um, show you guys on camera where everything happens to be. You're going to see a lot more black pen than you would on your own painting, unless you outline a black pen too. Okay. This is the burnt sienna, and it's very, very watery. It's mostly water. I didn't want this to be a super heavy line. I just want you guys to see. You can clean up any of your lines with your paint. It's gently getting in there. This line of brush is dying. It's starting to fray. I have to bring it back with some um, oil or brush cleaner. When I was in art school, I used to take care of my brushes with shampoo and brush conditioner and everything. Now not so much because I'll admit it, I'm lazy <laughs> with my brushes. I leave them in water for too long, too often. I'm just going to do this other side here of her hand. And I'm going to get in um, on the video, I painted on my own hand to kind of show you guys. This is going to be the darkest part of the hand right here where I'm painting. The little dots where the fingers meet the rest of the palm is going to be the darkest part of your hand. So you could actually get in there with um, a bit of burnt umber. And if you put burnt umber in no other part of the hand, just get it in these little areas. Just do a little dot. I'm going to do it to each part of it. Try to keep them even. And you have the darkest part of the hand there. And I'm going to go on this side now. And just kind of bring back the outline a little bit more. Because this is black, it's going to show all the imperfections too because you have such a light color on top of it. Uh, versus if it were the burnt sienna, the colors complement each other a lot better. You wouldn't see as many imperfections because they kind of blend together. And paint all the way up the hand. If you guys do have any questions um, about painting hands or anything, let me know in the chat on the right hand side of the screen so that I can answer them. Uh, 
pick up the camera just a little bit off of this so you get CPO focus out some. From here, I would say that my, um, my hands and arms are done, but you can go back and forth. So you can see a little bit of the highlight in there and the shadows. Yeah, a lot going on, but you can go back and forth um, your, yourself personally if you are sitting at home like, mm, I want it to look a little bit more round in certain spots. Add a little bit more highlight there. And Monique asked, how long did it take you to develop your own style and for you to realize you like whimsical facts? I am still developing my own style. So we're talking 15 years um, now. I knew I wanted to be an artist. I knew I wanted to paint. And when I first started, I wanted to be a children's book illustrator. So I knew I liked a whimsical style. But I didn't know about the whole whimsical mixed media art stuff um, until quite recently. I was painting more from what I was seeing in uh, popular culture, in American popular culture in magazines. So I thought I was painting more for gallery work in pop surrealism or lowbrow art and big eye art, I guess. Um, and I found it through Etsy.com. Um, I found a lot of people who were doing even more whimsical stuff that looked more like children's book illustration to me through Etsy and it was easier to to feel like I fit in with that more because I felt like I was trying too hard to do pop surrealism and I can get you the link to what I mean if you guys don't know what pop surrealism is it came from the American West Coast in California a lot of um, artists who were surf and street artists developed it and it mixes a lot of um, styles but they're almost cartoony naive looking but they're not they're not necessarily whimsical and I wanted something that was more childlike and had more fun with it my style even now is kind of changing since we're talking about style so I'm starting to like adding a lot more layers of color, whereas I used to paint very flat before. I'm adding highlights here. I didn't add a second coat, so you guys are going to see the unevenness of her face. But I'm going to add the highlights in anyway, and I'm going to paint in her um, nose and lips. And then we're going to hop right into um, adding the color pencil. I just wanted to get some features in here first. I always highlight her nose with something that looks like an exclamation point. Highlight underneath the eyes and around the inner corner. In the middle of the eye. And then I do highlight um, on the cheeks. And above the lip. And then I drew a circle for her chin. And that's where I'm going to highlight in the chin. And I'm going to see if this paint doesn't dry super fast, but I can just all feather those in together. You can see on this side here where I wasn't quick enough because I added so much paint to the face. So I'm just going to do it again with the feather. Let me get my burnt sienna in here and I'm just going to paint that um, the filtrum, the dip in the nose and then the bureau strip of the nose as well and her lips really quickly. I don't want her nose to be super duper realistic. So I'm going to blend that a lot. And I'm pushing down and kind of pulling up to um, pull out some of the paint while blending it as well. And then the darkest darks are the burnt umber. Let me get that in her nostrils. Just 
just a wee bit. And then on the sides. This is just a quick to get the face of it because I want to move on to her hair and show you guys uh, different colored pencil techniques. But I don't want a blank face staring at me. I'm going to grab, um, I've got purple, so we're doing purple eyes. I'm going to show you, you can do the same for her eyes. This is how I create gradients, too, is I just paint in um, the color. And if you aren't comfortable with um, making a gradient using paint and water, you can just use a clean, damp brush and blend the color downwards. This works if you're doing color over a uh, blank canvas or if you're doing color over paper. You can do more than one layer if you need to. So this is paint. And then uh, clean. You can use the same brush, you can use a separate one. Clean brush and then you're just going to pull the color downwards. So it's the darkest at the top and the lightest at the bottom. It's a really quick and easy way to get color onto uh, your person. I'm going to add a little bit more at the top for shadow. Without worrying that you are the strongest painter. And now her lips are bothering me guys. Sorry, I'm going to hop on to putting some paint on her lips and then we're going to move right on to the, the colored pencil. If you guys ever do that, you take a step back and you're like, ah, this part is bugging me. I will do that 8,000 times. And then paint over for, you know, two hours, one spot, before I just have to walk away from the whole painting. So there was a burnt umber, or burnt, pardon me, the burnt sienna underpainting on the top lip. And then I'm going to paint this magenta color on the top and bottom lip. And you can see how much that affects the color, that underpainting. It desaturates the color, and it makes it look more like it belongs on its face, where now this bottom lip kind of looks like she's wearing a, a bit of um, colored lip gloss or lipstick. So I took a clean brush, and I just lifted out some of that color because I thought it was too bright. And then I'm just going to highlight on the lips by mixing a little bit of my... Um, my off-white with the pink color for her lips and it's just two strips right in the middle of the bottom lip to highlight. I'm going to pull up you guys so you can see everything that's going on here and we're going to move right along into um, the color pencil. We've got about 15 minutes for that and I think we can do it. So let me pick this up so you can see her arms and her hands, and then into her face. I really like those purple eyes. And the unevenness of her face is there because we did do a second layer of skin tone. You can kind of see how it affects it. Even though I added um, highlight in there, you can see how uneven it is with just one layer of skin tone there. I'm going to grab some color pencils. I have the Prismacolor Premier and the Very Thins. I think I got a 12-pack of the Very Thins. And then I have Prismacolor. You can hear me bring them over. Um, the Premier, and I bought a bunch for just, you know, buy the pencil um, for doing skin tones and stuff. So I have a weird mix of colored pencils, but... Choose colors you like or buy a pack of them and just work those into your painting. Don't think too much about it. So on this side I'm going to show you, um, I think, dry and on this side I'm going to show you wet of the same color. And I already have some butterflies just drawn in here so you can see. So we're going to do some dry butterflies and then I'm going to color lightly in the middle of them. And then I'm just I'm going to dip my pencil into paint and I'm going to do a wet butterfly over here.
And as soon as um, you've put all the wet pencil lead onto the paper, you'll get a dry pencil again. It'll start looking like a dry pencil. I'm going to show you the difference between adding water to the dry one. So you can see it barely moves anything around. But if you're adding um, wet pencil, or wet, pardon me, water to the wet pencil, it'll move around a little bit more. Can you see in the edges here, we've got more like a wash of blue happening here? So you can use your colored pencils a teeny bit like they were watercolor pencils if you'd like. And they will set dry, whereas watercolor pencils, you'll, you'll pull them back up off of the paper or canvas. They're a lot of fun to use, but you'll end up bringing the color off because it's a water-soluble pencil. Whereas these are wax-based and they're not supposed to be water-soluble, but you can still move the pigment around. So this is dry on this side in a purple. And again, um, the tip wet, and I'm just going to do the other side of it, wet. This works better on canvas because the canvas um, texture tends to kind of break down the lead a little bit more. But you can do it on watercolor paper. You just have to be really careful. I didn't just with this paper, so it will start to eat into the paper, even though it's my nice, thick, 140-pound um, paper. Solvent will work instead of water, Monique, but depending on the type of solvent you use, if you're using your citrus solve, um, it stains your paper. It might not stain the canvas as much, but I'm not sure how well the solvent will play with your acrylics. Solvent might break down the acrylic binder. I haven't tried it. So I have this wet here. I'm going to just kind of clean the edge of my pencil. Then I'm going to do this um, dry at the top, and then I'm going to add wet to it, which is with my water. And you can see the two. I'm going to get in there close. You still have, it looks like colored pencil, right? You still have the colored pencil marks in there. But the dry versus the wet, it kind of looks like you did a watercolor wash on top of your pencil here. I'm going to pick up uh, um, a couple of paint mediums to show you. And pull it, you might hear me moving around some. I'm going to squirt them directly on the paper, guys. So that is my way. This is just golden um, acrylic glazing liquid. And then I'm going to pick up, I have a Americana brand right here. This is a glazing medium. So you could use the more expensive one or the cheaper one. I'm going to put that down. And then I have some glue. I have some Mod Podge. I'm going to show you that too with these colored pencils. So this will actually seal the layer of colored pencils all of these well. I'm going to grab it and then show you the acrylic glazing liquid first over the dry. So it's not doing anything. And just a teeny bit, if you guys can see. I'm going to get pretty darn close to part of my movement. It's moving it around just the slightest bit. Okay, if you can see that, it's just teeny tiny bit purple. If you add a glazing liquid like this, a clear acrylic, over the top of your pencil, it'll stop it from moving around with your next layers. And it'll make it look more like you used acrylic paint because you'll get that brush stroke painterly quality to the top of your pencil. And I'm going to grab a different color pencil. I have a green, and I'm going to do this while the pencil is still wet on the paper, so you can see. And just coloring in there. 
and I'm going to grab some more of the glazing liquid and I'm going to move it all around like it's paint. So you can get it to work um, a little like paint. And again, this works. This is watercolor paper, so it's not going to move as much. It moves a lot more on canvas. So you can start using it like a light, light wash of paint. The glazing medium is a little thinner, but it'll do the same thing. And then I'm going to pick up um, just a little bit of Mod Podge, the blue that a lot of people use for collage. And you can also paint on top of your work with that. And these things help seal the colored pencil layer. I was using the satin. Cynthia, you're asking, um, is it matte or gloss? It is in between. It's satin. And I'm going to show you guys on the skin. You can add a lot of different colors. You can do dry. Excuse my hand. You can do wet. And it'll work over acrylic as well. And just like it was working um, better over gesso, it's going to work a little better over acrylic because you have the um, plastic of the acrylic to move it around. So I'm grabbing some of my medium. This is the cheap medium. They both do the same thing. If you find it, um, it's usually in the craft and hobby section. And with Christmas coming up, you'll probably find these more. These are going to have a lot of painting stuff for Christmas ornaments. But this was the Americana brand, and I found it right in um, both Michael's and my Walmart here in Florida. You can see that it looks more like paint now with that. And I'm going to grab just a regular acrylic paint. And I'm going to use... I'm just going to use some um, skin tone that was still on my my paint palette. So I have the um, skin tone on my brush and a colored pencil that is wet. Let me get over here on her neck. So that wet colored pencil. You can see the water. And then you can just paint over the top of that so that you have colorful shadows. You can do this in any part of her um, skin. You can do in the shadows at the top of the face, even, if you'd like. And then cover it with acrylic paint. And it'll move just a little bit. This was dry on this side. When that dries, you'll see um, a little bit of purple showing through. And then I'm going to do it on the other side. This is wet. So when I paint the um, skin tone into it, it's going to move around a little bit more. If you see the colors are blending together, you get a whole different range of color. And you can do this for the whole face. Color the entire face and then just go over the top of it with uh, acrylic. It's blowing it up. So you can get a lot of different um, effects using colored pencils, wet or dry, with your acrylic paint. You can pull up, hopefully, so we can see a little bit more of what's going on here. I'm going to paint a little bit. I have um, some off white left on my palette. So I paint into this is a dry colored pencil over here that had the um, acrylic glazing liquid on it. So you can see it's not going to move around at all when I paint over it. I'm painting over it with white too, so you're not going to see it, the paint show up necessarily on the paper, but you are going to see it gets pushed back. You can do this too in between layers. If you want her to have um, very colorful hair, but you don't want the anything you do in the background to show through as much, you can paint over it and then add, say, a darker color on top. And then you tone down if you feel like your background's gotten a little too colorful. You can just tone it down.
going to paint this burnt sienna into the other side too so you guys can just kind of see me painting over color pencil with acrylic. I'm just grabbing all the butterflies. There we go. Get closer. So you can see you can get the detail. You can draw anything. You can write into it. If you like journaling or you like writing quotes, you can write into it as well. And we are coming right up on time. So if um, you guys have any questions, let me know in chat so that I can answer them. Pick up and move over here. I'm just going to leave it like that because I hate moving the camera around so much. Is, are there any questions? Do you guys need to see anything um, clarified? Any questions about the color pencil or the acrylics or any of the supplies that I use? Let me know now. If there's anything you guys would like to see in the evening class, also let me know that I didn't cover here so that I have an idea of what to cover for you guys um, tonight at 8. If not, we can go ahead and kind of clear everything up, and I'm going to hit end broadcast because I don't see anything. All right. So thank you guys for being here. I'm going to hit end broadcast, so I'm not in YouTube, but it's not going to close anything out.